Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with, and some which are new to me. Today is one of the former. Today we're going to be looking at a game called Damocles. This was a 1990 release from Novagen Software for the Atari ST and Amiga. Um, Commodore 64 and Spectrum versions were originally planned for release, but uh, they were eventually cancelled due to the kind of decline of the 8-bit market by the time Damocles was, was ready to release. It's the sequel to a game called Mercenary, uh, which was a 1985 release for Atari 8-bit initially, and subsequently Commodore 64, Spectrum, uh, Amstrad CPC, ST, Amiga, and Commodore 16 as well. So you managed to cram it into 16K of memory. Um, now, Mercenary is... Quite a remarkable game, really, because it was one of the first ever free-roaming, polygonal, open-world 3D games. Um, so you had a real huge amount of freedom to explore this city, uh, fly around it in various vehicles, um, descend into an underground complex, and try and unravel a, a, a sort of plot and escape from the planet. Damocles is a direct sequel to that. In Mercenary, the concept is that you crash land on the planet while you're on the way to go and do a job somewhere. And in Damocles, what happens is that you finally show up to do the job you were hired for, but it turns out you only have three hours left to do it. And it's kind of an important job, because the planet Eris is going to be destroyed by a comet in three hours. So, uh, yeah, you've really got your work cut out for you. So Damocles was noteworthy for expanding the single city setting of Mercenary into a whole solar system. And it had realistic orbital dynamics and all sorts of fancy things like that. So you could sort of see uh, nice sunsets and sunrises and things. And it was really, really clever, really, really fascinating game um, from a technical perspective as well as, as, well as to play. Um, the game was widely beloved for its very simple but subtle approach to storytelling and narrative. Um, and also its good sense of humor. His sense of humour is very British. It makes a lot of references to sort of uh, contemporary 1990s culture, early 1990s, late 1980s culture. So it makes reference to things like Margaret Thatcher's premiership, um, Nigel Lawson, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, and, um, and and various other things that are sort of pretty unique to UK players. So things like the M25 motorway and that sort of thing as well. So. Um, that's not to say that people from the rest of the world can't enjoy it, it's just you'll get a particularly uh, good amount out of it if you do happen to be British. Now before we jump into the game itself, let's have a look at the box. So here's the box, Damocles by Paul Wokes. Paul Wokes is sadly no, no longer with us, he passed away a few years ago, but um, yeah, he has uh, quite an enduring legacy with some great games for... Atari computers in particular, he's very fond of the Atari computer, so we've, uh, we've really seen Encounter on the Atari 8-bit A to Z series. And I'm sure some more of his stuff will come up at some point as well. But uh, Damocles and um, Mercenary 3, which came after this one, obviously, um, are some of his most sort of enduring and fascinating works. So I'm really excited to return to these. So here's the back of the box with some screenshots and a bit of blurb about it. Let's just see what it has to say. So Damocles, noun, sword of imminent danger. Visiting Dionysius, king of Syracuse, Damocles expressed his admiration of what he imagined to be a most gratifying experience, the ruling of a kingdom. Dionysius was later to provide a powerful demonstration of his own review of the reality of kingship. While seated at a feast, Damocles discovered that a sword had been suspended directly above his head. It was held only by a single human hair. Eris is the fifth planet in the Gamma Solar System of nine planets and their 19 moons around the star Dialis. The comet Damocles in its present trajectory will collide with Eris in just a few hours. Damocles is author Paul Wokes' sequel to his worldwide hit Mercury, his creation this time a complete solar system. Fly among the planets and moons, land and explore the bases, towns and cities. Go into buildings and find the objects and clues that will lead you through to a number of solutions to this gripping challenge. So yeah, there's, um, there's five different solutions to this game. Um, two of which are destructive to the comet, so you destroy the comet in two different ways. Um, but then there's also three solutions where you, um, you you save it as well. And so there's, uh, there's sort of an environmental message in there as well, that, that sometimes there's a solution to a problem that doesn't involve destroying something. So, continuing on. You are not alone in this task. Benson, your ninth generation PC, is your guide and mentor whose wry humor punctuates countless hours of absorbing play. 
game save facility is invaluable in your battle against the red relentless decay of real time. It's almost inevitable that you will view the spectacular consequences of failure, but what immense satisfaction awaits your ultimate success. So, pretty bold claims indeed. So inside the box, we've got a single floppy disk, and yeah, this whole game fits onto one disc, which is kind of remarkable, really. Um, we've got this rather cool... Just sit back a bit for that one. So yeah, we've got a chart of the, uh, of the Gamma system, including a sort of chart of what is where and how far away things are from different things. Yeah, so the, the planet's diameter and their distance from Dialis, the sun, and all that sort of thing. And then on this bottom map here, we've got some sort of maps of the planets that show the ones that have sort of major settlements on them and that sort of thing. So from that, you can use that as a sort of starting point for your explorations and decide where you're going to go and what you're going to pursue and so on. We've got a fairly no frills instruction manual that's in four languages. that explains how to play the game, how to manipulate objects, that sort of thing. Damocles is a game of discovery and exploration in which you are 21st century, <laughs> 21st century soldier of fortune, a mercenary. Your fight, should you choose to take on the challenge, is against the forces of nature. Your objective in any event is to gain a fortune in return for your endeavour. You have been invited by the state president to the planet Eris for work that offers a rich reward, if you succeed. The comet Damocles in its present trajectory is on a collision course with Eris and will destroy the planet. You will be asked to prevent this catastrophe. When those originally charged with finding a solution were seen to be failing, the president called for your assistance. Unfortunately, you were unexpectedly delayed en route, and now, on your arrival, there are only a few hours remaining before the comet hits. And so the game begins, with you having landed at Eris Capital City Spaceport. Your car awaits. The key, which you need to pick up, is in the spaceport building. Board the car and drive along the exit road. The state office is the first building along this road that you can see. For a full briefing, walk in. It's up to you. In Damocles, you choose the action. So yeah, we'll see that when we actually uh, come to play this, how this works. But yeah, it throws you straight into the game in a sort of uh, um, a sort of interactive intro, if you like. Um, it's it's really cool, very immersive, um, and that's that's always been the thing in the Mercenary series. It's it's always sort of drawn the player in right from the start, and it's a, a sort of fascinating way of doing things. So what else have we got in here? We've got a sheet of note paper. It appears to be uh, some maps that I made <laughs> when I was originally playing this. I used to have a lot more of those. I wonder where the rest of those are gone. Because like, one time I played this, I went and systematically mapped out every single planet in the um, in the Gamma system because it just made it a lot easier to, to get around and so I wonder if those are in the Mercenary 3 box. Here is the Mercenary 3 box. There it is. Here's Mercenary 3, which we'll come to separately at some point. Let me just have a look in it. Ah, here is that it? No, that's a list of transporters with some <laughs> lots of doodles that I did. Um, oh no, my maps are in here. There's also a demo disc from ST Action in there for some reason. Yeah, here we are. I feel like I'm going to need these. Yeah, so lots of <laughs> bits of old note paper showing what is where on the various planets and their coordinates and so on. So there's no auto map system in this game. So it's, uh, yeah, you, you, you really need to, to sort of make a map or at the very least make note of the coordinates that various different things are at um, in order to get around, as you'll see when we start playing. So I'm not gonna promise that we're gonna get through the whole game or anything like this. The actual, the actual sort of critical path through the game isn't that long if you know what you're doing, but I can't remember any of the solutions, so I, we're just going to have a little explore and see what goes on. And then if you do want to play this game for yourself, you can either emulate the ST version or there's actually a, um, I think it's an open source project that you can actually just play, effectively play the ST version on PC. Um, I believe it's completely legal, sort of done with the, with, um, the prior permission of, of Paul Wokes before he passed away. And so, yeah, if you're interested in the Mercenary series as a whole, that's a great way of getting involved. You can just run it on any modern system. So look out for that. Um, I will try and remember to put a link in the description for that, if I remember. I often forget, so apologies for that. Anyway, enough talking. Let's go play Damocles. 
Okay, here we are with Damocles. I must apologise in advance for any coughing and spluttering and wheezing. I've been uh, shaking off a cold for about the past month at this point. Um, so yeah, just to apologise in advance for that. Alright, here we are with the introduction to Damocles. We are arriving in the Gamma system. This is all automatic at the minute. This is... Um, Benson, your computer, flying you on autopilot, as he says there, and taking us to where we need to go. So, um, your instrument panel down at the bottom tells you lots and lots of bits of information. So it tells you what planet you're on, uh, it tells you the coordinates of where you are, your altitude, um, so heading, and you've got inventory. Down at the bottom right you've got your all-important clock, which is how much time you've got left to save Eris. Um, the T gauge on the left is the temperature, and the P gauge on the right is the air pressure. So using that information you can determine whether the planet you're on is somewhere that you'll be able to sort of survive wandering around on. Because that's very much a concern on some of these planets in the Gamma system. But we don't need to worry too much about that right now. Okay, there's the spaceport just up ahead. Benson will land us in just a moment. And while he does that, I'm just going to see if I can find my maps of this place. Ooh, let's knock the microphone. Uh, so that is Icarus. Sorry, you're going to hear a bit of rustling for a bit because there are lots of bits of paper I've got here. Because there are a lot of places to go. You are disembarked. Don't to spend too long because, uh, you know, time is constantly ticking while you're playing this game. A few seconds probably isn't going to. Ah, here we are, capital city. Is that where we start? Yeah, I guess it must be. Yes. All right. I have a map. I have a map. You can't see that because it's too bright. But I, I do have a map. Okay, let's proceed. So, in this game, uh, when you're on foot, you can walk around using the joystick. If you hit the R key to run, you can move a bit faster. There's our car. That's waiting for us. But we can't actually get into it because we need a key for it. So our first task is to go and get that key, which is in the spaceport building here, if you remember what we read in the manual. And there it is over there. VL stands for VIP Limo. Proceed by car along spaceport exit road. The state president's office is located at the first road junction. Enter on arrival. So... You stand next to the car, press B to board, and then you can use the number keys to adjust your speed. And then just position yourself as you see fit. Increase your speed. Ooh. Hard to keep this thing going straight. <laughs> Good job there's no other traffic on the roads. Yeah, this is one thing one thing that was added in Mercenary 3. Um, was there was a fully functional public transport system that actually put some other cars and things on the road, but in this one, you are the only person who's actually driving around and walking around. So you won't see any other people in this. Um but you may well you'll talk to people but you just won't see them um, yeah as we'll get an idea and we stop here so let's just park outside at the office here I think it's space bar to stop there we go and then L to leave your vehicle and then we just wander in give 
Communication from State President. Thank you for coming, finally. He was supposed to be here months ago. Eris will be destroyed in a few hours' time. Please read the Damocles file. The file is in the room to the left of the entrance. Okay, so there it is. So we can pick that up. Please use the following keypad keys to operate. Enter to open, star to read, plus for next item. So you press the enter key and that brings up the Damocles file in the middle of our interface there. So if we read the problem section. The comet Damocles is on a collision course with Eris. See chart D1745 for trajectory. That's the one you've got in the box. Okay. History. A parliamentary committee has been sitting for the last 30 years to consider the problem. And has published many reports, all to no avail. This is one of the uh, one of the many British jokes in this. Um, kind of timely now, thinking about it, with the whole Brexit thing going on right now and how long that's taken to resolve things. Solution. Rumour has it that there can be as many as five ways to solve the problem. The only progress so far has been reported by Professor Ralph Hansen in the development of an immensely powerful bomb. Oops, wrong button. Unfortunately, the Aeris State President and the Professor had a fierce argument following from a game of chess. Hansen has not been seen since. Head of Hansen Industries, which operates at the forefront of technology, with products ranging from tin openers to time machines, cryogenic. Other. The mystical order of carpenters maintain that a device giving access to a profitable solution is in existence, and the author does concede that if so, such a prospect may not be unique. Politics. The Dion Verdant Party, Dark Green Chapter, have moved to place a re preservation order on Damocles. So, that's that's giving you a clue that if you can find a solution to the problem that doesn't destroy the comet, uh, you can score yourself a lot more money. Lloyd's Group 4 have offered an additional reward of 25 million ICGs for the salvation of Eris, if achieved without destruction of the comet. Yeah, there we go. Lloyd's consider Damocles will be a valuable tourist attraction on projected future visits. Yeah, see, it's all about business. It's always all about business. Your panel display is tuned to Eris time to go before Damocles hits. Please note that intergalactic travel takes you very little time but rapidly decays the Eris time available. Yeah, so there's a sort of time dilation thing in this game, where it, when you're doing interstellar travel, um, the time goes down a lot more quickly, so you want to try and minimise the amount of time you're in space. And if at all possible, uh, you want to try and find alternative ways to get from planet to planet, because there are some. After fully reading this file, please take the elevator to my office in this building, located at the end of the corridor on the second floor. Okay, that's that. So we can we can drop that again now because we don't need to carry that with us. Because it didn't give us any sort of specific information that we need to constantly refer back to. So, let's leave this room and take the elevator. Which is one of these doors over here. And then we just step in here and press 2 to go to the second floor. Here we are on floor two. So nothing much going on there because that's that's just the other elevator. So I guess we just well, let's have a peek in this room first. Anything going on in here? Oops. There's no strafing in this game. So yeah, it's, it's just turn and move. There's a bench, which 
We can pick up if you want to. You can pick up most things in this game as long as they're not too heavy. Um, and there's there's even like an anti-grav unit you can get later on that allows you to pick up heavy things like spaceships and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, you need to make a, a sort of judgment as to whether or not it's worth picking stuff up. One thing worth doing, this game has a lot of objects that aren't what they seem. So it's worth actually picking up an object and pressing the enter key to see if you can interact with it like with the Democles file. In the case of this bench, nothing going on there so we can just put that down safely. All right, here is the office. Communication from State President. It was my initiative to call for you four years ago, but I know there has generally been a delay, so I've now followed the population in evacuation. So that's, uh, I do hope that you will accept the assignment to save areas from Democles. So that's justifying why there's no people around or no cars anywhere. We shall, of course, reward you richly for success. The sum of 10 million ECUs should suffice. Do you accept the assignment? OK. Now you can press O for OK at this point, or you can just wait, and that will negotiate a slightly higher price for you. Well, how about 15 million, and that will do nicely. Excellent. And remember, we're all with you. Well, not here, actually, but with you in spirit. May I suggest that you make a start by going to... Professor Hanson's laboratory at 0605 Bear Island. For reference, see chart D1745 again. That's the one you've got in your box. Your spacecraft key is in the basement. So yeah, we can't ju we can't just use the one we we came here on for some reason. We have to go and get a new one. All right, let's have a quick look on floor one as well because we didn't go there. I don't think there's anything useful on this floor, but let's have a look anyway. What is that? It's an air conditioner, and we don't need that for now. And nothing going on in here. So obviously with sort of the low polygon thing going on here, there's only so much detail that they could put in um, and keep the frame rate up. And the frame rate in this is already pretty variable, but um, yeah, you have to use your imagination to certain them out. But I, I always I always rather like that. It's like, there's a lot of stuff in this that really sort of stokes the fires of the imagination. It's like the different use of color and the the way things are laid out. Your spacecraft is waiting ready on the pad at the Morby School of Flying. Take the road opposite on leaving this building. All right, I will. And here we are, back on the ground floor. What's in here? Oh, that's the way out. That is where we want to go. Okay, so hop back in the car. And drive over the grass, I'm sure they won't mind. And head for the Morby School of Flying. There it is. And there's our spacecraft. So let's just go and park up and we'll leave that there now um, because you only have limited inventory space if you look next to the uh, the bit on the screen that says key eagle 9 se you've only got a limited amount of stuff you can keep in your inventory and the little blue gauge on the left of that um, shows you how much space you've got left. So we're probably not going to need the car anytime soon, so I'm just going to drop the key here and save us a bit of inventory space. But we can always come back for that if we need to. What is this? It's an electric fire. That doesn't seem to do anything. So we'll put that back down. And now we can just 
hop into our shiny new spacecraft. There it is. And we can trundle around to the runway. <clears throat> I always found myself sort of doing the stuff in the vehicles properly. Just because it it felt like the right thing to do. That was that's one of the things I'm talking about with with sort of the, the feeling of immersion and using your imagination so and I, I used to really like doing stuff like just sort of taxiing around on these runways I mean the, the detail was there so why not enjoy it so we're taxiing out to the runway <coughs> excuse me and there goes the aforementioned cough Just swing into position and then throttle up and off we go right so at this point if you tap the escape key that is your escape thrusters which will um, send you flying backwards up off the planet um, now it's useful to do that because it allows you to get a sort of overview of the uh, of what the planet looks like uh, or what the city you're in looks like so we're currently looking down on um capital city so from here we can figure out where we might want to go uh, and i can use my map to have a think about now if i remember rightly there's something at the eris post office headquarters uh which is where is that? Oh, my map's oriented differently to the direction we're in at the minute, so I think... Yes. Okay, so we want to head for... this bit up towards the north here. Because I remember there being a useful item here. Now, thankfully you don't have to land properly or anything but again I quite like doing that so we'll just come in for an approach and get ready to park nicely outside the area's post office headquarters which is this building here There you go, it's night time now, so you can see so the planets and moons rising and falling in the background. And there we go, landed safely. Alright, let's see what's in here. Uh, let's check the basement first. Nothing much going on down here, I don't think. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's the first floor. Uh -huh. Aeris Post Office, public announcement. Due to foreseen circumstances, we have moved to... New offices at 0010, Birmingham Island, Dion. I think this is the thing we want. Yes, the A to Z computer. So, this is an essential thing to have because it tells you where you are. It allows you to find key locations much more easily. Um, so, like as you're flying around, the A to Z computer will update and tell you um, basically where you are and if it's, if it's important or, or um, worth checking out. So stuff that has names generally is worth checking out for one reason or another. There might not be anything useful there, but there might be something entertaining and amusing there, if nothing else. Now, you don't have to check every floor of every building, and in fact, it's probably inadvisable to do so, but, uh, you know, just for the sake of... Well, 
just in case there is something here something else here All right, I think we're good. We don't need to go through all of those floors. Right, so the president suggested that we go and check out the professor's lab on Bear Island. So, if we just take off. We can see that we're currently in Capital City. And Bear Island, I think, is... Might be that one over there. You see in the background the planets are moving quickly because it's it's simulating the um sort of moving around the curvature of the planet. That's Velos City, so that's not the right one. Bear Island must be this one then. So yeah, you're moving around the curvature of the planet, so the, the planets in the background seem to be moving in relation to you. Here we are. Okay, so you can see the city as you get a little bit closer. And we want to head for 0605. We can do that using those coordinates on our instrument panel, the one that currently says a rapidly declining number 03. So the first digit is your east-west coordinates and then the second one is your north-south one. So at the moment we're at negative 06. So I'm guessing the processor's lab will be at the end of, probably the end of that long road that's heading left there. So we can point straight in that direction and head over there if that's where we think we need to be. Flying over Hanson Airport at the minute. No, 606. So I guess we want to go south a bit then. Here we are, Hanson Laboratory. So again, you don't need to worry too much about doing a nice delicate landing or anything like that. Because even if you even if you land hard, you won't die in this. You can't actually die in this game. Um, if you do, you sort of get. There are a couple of instances where you can get shot down and technically killed, but you can just respawn. And if you crash your ship or anything, that doesn't have any sort of consequences or anything. You, it's just a very hard landing. <laughs> right, let's have a look in the basement of the prof's place. It's a key. It's key B. It's all key B. So that will open any doors that have the B lock on them. I can't remember how many door different types of lock there are altogether. Uh, but they, they've all got letters on them. So in order to pass through them, you need that key. So nothing here. Let's try the top floor, which is the fourth floor in the case of this building. If I remember rightly, in my experience, stuff is either uh, here we are, either on the the first or the top floor in most cases. All right, what's this? It's a top secret file. It's about the Nova bomb secret. This info classified under the Official Secrets Act. This file is classified as top secret and should be kept secure and locked safe at all times rather than left on a table. The penalty for leaking any content of this file is 15 years minimum at the Pan Hades labor camp. Oops. The Nova Bomb operates beyond previous known laws our physics is instantaneous in effect and is capable of destroying the largest of planets. The destruction of the comet Damocles. No only to the professor for delivery on the day. 
Place on surface of comet, remote detonation. The bomb requires no special conditions in store or transit. It emits a detectable low level of radiation at levels okay for one hour of exposure. Sounds perfectly safe. Four individually coded detonators are necessary, each switched on and transmitting to detonate. For additional security, the detonators are disguised as ordinary household items. This is why you need to pick stuff up. The integrity of four prominent people holding detonators and a reliable fifth holding the bomb meets government safety regulations. Okay, so that's all the clues we've got for the minute, really. Um, so we know that the Nova Bomb is somewhere, and that there are four detonators disguised as household items. So there's another file over here. What does this say? Thursday the 12th. Monique, last night I fixed your word processor. Friday the 13th. Monique, let the Nova Journal as follows. Paul, I know there's every reason to be late, but I must have the four detonators completed and ready for me to prime by the 18th latest. Paragraph. Damocles is due in two weeks. Regards, Ralph. So the, the Paul there is Paul Wokes uh, of Novagen Software, who made this game. Tuesday the 17th. Monique, letter to state president as follows. My dear Margaret, Margaret Thatcher, thank you for your letter. Paragraph. I do know that there are only ten days to go on the project for the destruction of Damocles. Paragraph. The bomb is complete, and although Novagen is behind schedule, the detonators will be posted to you and the three other trustees in good time. Paragraph. I do look forward to our chess game next week. Yeah. Yours affectionately, Ralph. Okay, so the state president was one of the people who held a detonator. Monique, dispatch detonators to trustees today. Monique, none of the detonators have arrived. Please check urgently with Aeris Post Office. I'm off to the country house for the weekend. Monique, it just will not do to know that all four parcels have been temporarily lost by the post office sorting branch on Snow Island. Dash, 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 dash. There is no time to make any more detonators. I want positive results by tomorrow, Ralph. Dash, 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 dash. P.S. I'm with the state president this evening. Monique, if that... <laughs> That twat phones. Tell her I've gone on holiday and not to Eris either, Ralph. Right, so important clue there. Um the detonators were lost by the sorting office on Snow Island. So that seems like a good place to go next. I've got a cat come to help. Hello, Patty. How are you? I'm flying to Snow Island. All right. Up. Nope. Get off the keyboard. Sorry about that cat on the keyboard. Let's uh, continue heading for Snow Island. Which is over there. Uh, 
Right, time to get the old A to Z computer out again. I'm going to have to pause and deal with this cat. Excuse me a minute. Right, let's continue, shall we? Right, we are looking for the post office sorting office. Which is right here, as it happens. Again, nice gentle landing. <laughs> See, that's what happens if you crash. Uh, nothing much. All right, let's see what info we can find out here. So there's a cabinet here. Oh, and that is one of the detonators. Okay, so we found one already. That's good. Yes, it's very good, isn't it, Patty? Well done. Now, can we find any clues as to where the other ones are? Clipboard. Complaints. Admin HQ. From Aries Post Office Headquarters, 1214 Capital City. To branch sorting officer 0003 Post Island. Snow Island, beg your pardon. Dear, dear Bill, you seem to have lost four parcels. Please send me copies of your lost report forms. Reply. To Aries Post Office Temporary HQ 0010 B. Dion. Birmingham Island, Dion. Dear Sid, enclose a copy lost report forms. See you tomorrow to watch the comment on TV. Bill. Last one. Address to Air State President Vesta Parliament. Refuse delivery in order to return to sender. The prof's new lab address traced, copy and closed. Shush. Sent to the Commissioner of Police Cellars, Eris Capital. Return today marked gone away and held here. So that's the one we already got. To Wilberforce K. Dodd, Governor Bank of Gaia. We'll write to the local postman for a report. Sent to Lord Chief Justice Pickles, NIC Metis. We'll write to the local postman for a report. Okay, so that gives us some clues to go on. So, first one to pursue is probably the heiress. Refuse delivery in order to return to sender. The professor's new lab address traced, copy and closed. Doesn't actually say. Yeah, it doesn't say where his new address is. Hmm. You know, something else here. What's this? Storage boxes. Nothing to do with those. Okay. All right, anything else we can do here? Doesn't look that way. So, let me let me just read that one again. Addressed to the Irish State President and Vesta Parliament. Refused delivery in order to return to sender. The professor's new lab address traced, copy and closed. So that one's been sent back to the professor. So I guess that must be the one we've already been to. Please be quiet. You are not helpful. <laughs> Uh, 
<sighs> this is Patty. Say hello, Patty. Now, can you get down, please, Patty? Thank you very much. <sighs> the things I do for cats. Right, um, let me just look again. Right, cat has been removed from the room. Let's uh, see what we can figure out from these maps I've drawn previously. So they said there was a temporary post office headquarters on Birmingham Island on Dion. So where is Dion in relation to Ares? I'm just looking at the the chart. So Dion is two planets inwards towards the sun from Eris. All right. So, well, this isn't going to be a complete playthrough or anything, but let's let's see if we can fly over there and take a look. And this will give you a chance to see what your space flight is all about as well. So, we are now in space. Oh no, not quite. Up a bit. There's Damocles. So that will actually continue to sort of move as you progress through the game. Uh, so, where are we headed? And the planet over there, is that right? I think that might be a moon, actually. Yeah, so this is Theon. The interstellar communications link here is... Buzzing with network transmissions on the comet. Okay, nothing much we can do there at the minute. So we want to head towards the sun, basically. You can see what that does to your timer in the corner. Oh, where are we going? I think it might be this one over here. I guess we'll find out that we are burning a hell of a lot of time doing that. No, I think this is the wrong one, because that's a gas giant, I think. Toloza. And Juno, yeah, Juno is definitely a gas giant. Okay, well, I made a bit of a mess of that. Um, let's see if I can find Dion, but obviously that's wasted way too much time to be practical at this point. So I think we... May well hope. Yeah, there we go. So down to down to three minutes. So you can actually watch it. Watch your failure in real time. There you go. There goes Eris. Message from ex state president. You have failed. Eris has been destroyed. My thanks for trying. Biddy, you were too late. 
As it is, if I ever need your services again, I still have the reward money available. Okay, so at that point, if you do fail, you can actually just continue playing, and you can continue exploring the world. You can fly around and explore the different planets and see what's on them, because there's lots of stuff to interact with besides that main storyline. You just need to get that out of the way first, uh, and preferably with minimal space flight, as you can see. Um, but yeah, that kind of came to a premature halt, because I'd forgotten quite how much of an impact that uh, space flight had on your time limit. But uh, anyway, hopefully that's given you a nice teaser of what Damocles is all about. Um, and you can feel free to try it for yourself as like i say there is um a sort of an open source project that's been to to port this to to modern systems it's well worth checking out it is a fascinating game in a variety of ways and so is it, so is its predecessor mercenary and its sequel mercenary 3 as well so i can highly recommend checking all of these games out because they're, they're fantastic they really are so um yeah sorry this ended a bit abruptly but um yeah, as I say, hopefully you've had, you've had an opportunity to see what it's all about and uh, how it works and sort of the intention behind it. There's a lot more that I haven't showed you there, but I, I guess I have to kind of draw a line somewhere. Anyway, apologies for all the cat interruptions as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, she just likes to join in. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects moegamer.net where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today and videopackgames.wordpress.com which aims to catalogue the small but well-formed library of the Philips G7000 video pack computer also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. Thank you.